Welcome artists! In this video we're going to learn how to draw a Yayoi Kusama inspired pumpkin. The materials you need are two colored pieces of paper in complementary colors, sharpie, colored pencils, scissors, and a glue stick. But as always, if you don't have colored construction paper, just go ahead and use white paper. The elements of art that we will focus on in this video are line, shape, and color. In particular, complementary colors. Those are two colors that are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. This combination provides a high contrast and high impact color combination. However, when mixed together using paint, they create brown. Let's examine specifically which colors are complementary to one another. So you have purple and yellow, red and green, blue and orange, all opposite each other on the color wheel. And lastly, we're going to focus on value, which is essentially how light or dark something is on a scale of white to black. It helps give our shapes what we call form and volume, making it look more 3D. Yayoi Kusama is inspiring our art today. She's a Japanese artist who is sometimes called the princess of polka dots. Although she makes lots of different types of arts, paintings, sculptures, performances, and installations, they all have one thing in common, dots. Before we begin, let's learn a little bit more about the incredible artwork and life of Yayoi Kusama in this book, From Here to Infinity. Yayoi Kusama was born in the country of Japan, on the island of Honshu, in a town called Matsumoto City, an old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat, where swans swam, the streets were lined with little shops, and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance, swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. Yayoi's family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew, and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayoi yearned for a different life, far from the countryside. She dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains, in places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Yayoi's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old-fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayoi wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and paper. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined their riverbed and at the leaves and stalks of plants, and she drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. When she was older and studying in art school, her teachers disapproved of her work, and they demanded that Yayoi paint in the traditional precise Japanese style. She wanted to go where she could live without rules. When she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first airplane trip. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The airplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. In New York, Yayoi went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues, and bankers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 86th floor, they looked like dots. She felt very far from quiet Matsumoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed like anything was possible. Yayoi set about turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills that she had brought to America quickly ran out and she spent what little money she had left on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold, she painted when she was hungry, she painted when she was lonely. And she turned her dots into sculptures too, into soft stuffed tubes that covered sofas and chairs and boats. She was devoted to her dots. For her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars, as one dot among millions of others. They were a way of thinking about infinity. Sometimes when she grew frustrated, she visited the Museum of Modern Art. She gazed at paintings by other artists, and she thought about why and how they were made. 
She looked at pictures of dancing girls and swirling night skies, trying to solve them as if they were puzzles. Her paintings seemed so different from those she had seen at the MoMA. When she at last was ready to show her work in public, she invited all of the friends she had made in New York. When they arrived at the gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the air shouting, Yayoi, you've finally done it! Word about her artwork quickly spread. Her friends told their friends, newspapers wrote about her work, and reporters clamored to interview her about her dots. Now she'd begun to show them in other cities all over the United States and Europe. Her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice and thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered over a big green lawn, on a pumpkin, on a pier. On dresses and t-shirts, on people walking down the street, and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again. An infinity of dots. Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she left, with many different artists challenging the old traditional style, as Yayoi had been doing all along. She still lives in Japan, and she continues to paint her dots every day. Here are just a few more of Kusama's beautifully painted polka-dotted pumpkins, as well as a few of her incredible sculptures. This last one I got to see this past summer. Your eye can is I can create a dotted pumpkin using the elements of art, line, shape, color, and value, inspired by the artist, Yayoi Kusama. I'm going to begin by choosing my pencil and paper and yellow. That's going to be my first complementary color. Now I want to do it landscape style so my picture looks like it goes from side to side. We are going to draw and start with a big oval shape. Now if you don't have a yellow piece of paper that's okay. You're going to just color in your pumpkin with whatever complementary color you choose on your white paper. After I've created that big oval, I'm going to draw one big curved line on each side. I'm going to create a little bit of symmetry today, meaning if we were to split our pumpkin in half, it would look the same on both sides. Now I'm going to create my stem, so I'm going to create a curved line at the top of my oval. I'm not really going to need the top of that pumpkin, so I'm going to create a, another oval at the top of my piece of paper. And then I'm going to connect that oval to my curved line with two other curved lines going down. Now I've got my stem. Now I don't need that line anymore, so I'm going to erase the part of the pumpkin that was going through because I want the stem to be in front. Now I need to draw another part of my pumpkin so inside that I'm just going to draw a little wavy line that goes down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So remember symmetry we want it to look almost the same. So I'm going to draw another wavy line that goes down and touches the bottom of my pumpkin. And lastly, I'm going to do the same thing on this side by creating a little wavy line that curves around and touches the bottom of my pumpkin. Now I can erase those other little curved lines which were just there as what we call a guideline to help us get the shape and size of our form sort of just sketched in. Next, grab your black Sharpie or marker and trace all of the lines that you just drew on your pumpkin. 
Next, it's time to add some value. We want to make our pumpkin look a little bit more three-dimensional, so grab a white colored pencil or crayon and begin shading in some highlights on the outer edges of each of the section of the pumpkin you just drew. Now that my highlights are finished, you're going to grab a darker colored colored pencil. So since I'm using yellow paper, I'm going to use a couple variations of orange to create some shadows, also helping give my pumpkin value and form, making it look more three-dimensional. Now that we have shaded and colored our pumpkin, giving it value, we are going to create our dotted patterns like Kusama. So you can draw however large or small polka dots that you would like, place them wherever you want as the artist. Just think of a repetitive pattern like Kusama. Now that I've finished my dots, I need to pick a paper for my background. Because we are focused on complementary colors, I'm going to choose purple. If I was picking red, I would do green or orange and blue. But because I did yellow, I'm going to pick a purple piece of paper. Again, if you didn't have colored paper, now you're just going to color your paper. You could draw your lines with your purple marker. I'm going to use black since I had a purple piece of paper. Now we are just going to create a geometric background with a series of lines. So I'm going to start with a zigzag and then I'm just going to start connecting those lines with extra sets of lines. They might create triangles, rectangles, squares, it doesn't matter. Just have fun creating random patterns with lines for your geometric background. Once you have finished your background, you need to get your scissors and a glue stick or glue. You are going to carefully cut out your pumpkin. Now it's time to glue that beautiful pumpkin onto your geometric background. Press down nice and firm and voila, you have created a beautiful Yayoi Kusama inspired pumpkin.